Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. <clears throat> I'm now answering question number six from the P3 International A Level Edexcel October 2021 exam. This question here is about curve C1, which has equation y equals 3 lin x squared minus 5 minus 4x squared plus 15. It says x is greater than root 5. Show that C1 has a stationary point at the point x when x is root p over 2, where p is a constant to be found. So we've got to find the basically the x-coordinate of uh, stationary point of this curve. So what we've got to do is we've got to differentiate this function. So when we differentiate this, we'll find dy dx. So differentiate y with respect to x. Now, when you differentiate something in the form of lin of a function, you end up with 3 divided by whatever's inside the lin of that function. So it's 3 divided by x squared minus 5. And then you multiply that by the differential of what's inside the function it's using the chain rule. So this is going to be 2x. So 3 times x, x squared minus 5 times 2x minus, you multiply by the power here, that's 8x to the power of 1. 15 it becomes 0. It's a constant when you differentiate it. So the stationary point, at the stationary point we know that the, um, the gradient is 0. So at the stationary point we know dy dx is equal to zero so we can equate this that gives that gives us 6x over x squared minus 5 minus 8x equals zero so to solve this equation now i can uh, multiply both sides by x squared minus 5 in which case this becomes 6x minus 8x times x squared minus 5 is equal to zero so expanding that that's 6x minus 8x cubed minus 40x, or plus 40x, sorry, um, is equal to 0. So now I've got um, 6x plus 46 plus 40x. That's, I'm going to have a 46x minus 8x cubed equals 0. I can uh, divide both sides by 2, I guess. Um, that will give me 23x minus 4x cubed equals 0. Take out x is common. We have 23 minus 4x squared equals 0. So x equals 0, or 4x squared equals 23. So x squared equals 23 over 4, which then means x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 23 over 4. Now, as we know, x is greater than root 5. As x is greater than root 5, therefore our value of x is going to be just the positive value of root 23 over over 2, sorry, not 4. Take the square root of both sides, so that's going to become a 2, and that's going to become a 2. Okay, so it's positive, square root of 23 over 2, so that's exactly the form that we wanted. So p is a constant to be found, so we can say here, if we want to, that p is equal to 23. Okay, so we've got the x-coordinate of the point in the form required. Okay, so that is the stationary point. That's the x value of the stationary point. There's another stationary point, it seems, at x equals 0, but they want us to show that there's one that is in this form. So that's part 1. And now for part 2. It says, a different curve, C2, has equation y equals 4x minus 12x, 12 sine squared x. Show that for this curve, dy dx equals a plus b sine 2x where a and b are constants to be found, and then it says, hence state the maximum gradient of this curve. Okay, so now, let's uh, first of all differentiate this. So you have y equals 4x minus 12. Now what I'm going to write, I'm going to write this like this, as sine x all squared, just to make it clear how to differentiate this properly. Sine squared x is the same thing as writing sine x all squared, Okay, and what we can do here from this is we can say, okay, dy dx is going to be 4. That part is easy, and this is also easy, but you multiply by the power because the main function here is something squared. So to, to, uh, to differentiate something like this, you're going to multiply by the power. So it's minus 24. This stays as it is, so it's sine x to the power of 1 now. You take 1 from the power, multiply by the power, take 1 from the power. Then using the chain rule, you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function which is cosine x. So we're left with dy dx is equal to 4 minus 24 sine x times cosine x. Now they want to express it in terms of sine 2x. 
Now we should know the identity that sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. This is an identity which we have to memorize, okay? But it comes from the identity that sine A plus B equals sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. This identity is in the formula book. And what's happened here is they've replaced them both with theta. So they have sine theta plus theta, which is also sine 2 theta. And that gave you sine theta cosine theta plus another, basically sine theta cosine theta. So you end up with 2 sine theta cosine theta. So that's where that comes from. This is in the formula book, this formula here, but this one isn't. But that's where it's derived from. So basically, we know that sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. Okay, so what we can do is we can say that this is the same as... 4 minus, I can think of this as 12 times, 2 times, uh, sorry, 12 times 2, 12 times, and I've got 2 sine x cosine x, and this becomes sine 2x. So this is 4 minus 12 times sine 2x, and this is dy dx, and this is the form that they wanted us to write it in, a plus b sine 2x, where a and b are constants to be found. So we can say a is equal to 4 and b is equal to negative 12. So there we have um, in that form. Then it says hence state the maximum gradient of this curve. So this is part a. Part b we have to state the maximum gradient of this curve. So the maximum value of dy dx. So if you've got dy dx equals 4 minus 12 sine 2x. Now the maximum value of the gradient is when 12 sine 2x is going to be its maximum value. Okay, so that's when sine 2x is equal to 1. The maximum value of sine 2x is when it's going to equal to 1. Okay, however, you see I'm going to have 4 minus something here. Now, 12 sine 2x, okay, first of all, sine 2x can, have, can vary between the values of 1 and minus 1. Okay, the sine of any angle can have its maximum value of 1 and minus 1. That's the maximum it can get to, right? So 12 sine 2x can have a maximum value. Okay, its, it's, 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 it's values can vary between, therefore, 12 and minus 12. So if I put, for example, here 12, I'll get 4 minus 12, which is 8. If I put, for example, here 0, I have 4 minus 0, which is 4 minus 8, which is negative 4, sorry. Uh, sorry, negative 8. If I, put my, if I put 12 here, I'm going to get negative 8. Okay, is that the biggest, can, is that the maximum it can be? Well, let's see. If I put 0 in here, you have 4 minus 0, which is 4, which is bigger. Okay, if I put, um, if I put uh, negative 12 in here, put negative 12 in here, what's going to happen? I'm going to have 4 minus minus 12, which would be 4 plus 12, which would be 16. So we can see the maximum... Um, dy dx is going to be okay 16 okay when this becomes it's when when si 12 sine 2x becomes negative 12 okay then this will this expression will become its biggest possible value because you have 4 minus minus that become plus and that will be 4 plus 12 which is 16 so the maximum value is going to be 16 okay the maximum dy dx is going to be 16 and that's derived by the fact that this can vary between 12 and minus 12. When this is 12, you know, you get 4 minus 12, which is negative 8. When this is negative 12, you get 4 minus minus 12, which is 4 plus 12, which is 16. So that's a very important point there. And there we have finished this question. Not really a very difficult question. Um, okay, not too difficult to, to do. You have to just know this identity. That's all really. Um, so that's four marks there. So... Other questions from this paper that you might want to watch will be in the playlist that should appear somewhere over here. Other questions from this topic of differentiation of um, trig trigonometry, it will, it will be in the differentiation uh, section of P3, which is going to be in this playlist over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.